Right, having got all excited about decay, we'll just very quickly cover um, gum disease. Now, this, this is a primer, and for all the hygienists out there watching this, don't get too upset. I realise that this is uh, very, very basic. But you've got to start somewhere, right? So, um, so this is... Uh, right, so what, what are we trying to accomplish? It's uh, reducing bacterial load. And um, reducing bacteria... Um, bacterial plaque. Now, unfortunately, uh, bacteria not only are quite effective at uh, producing toxins which cause inflammation, which cause destruction, but they're also pretty good at hiding um, because they produce a, um, a polysaccharide um, plaque around themselves, which means you have to really struggle to get the stuff off, which is why it's a good idea to brush not infrequently, in other words frequently, um, because it stops it from A, getting well established, and secondly, it stops it, it stirs things up a bit so that it can't get organised. Okay, so what you really want to do is remove those, uh, uh, deal with those two things. So here we've got a diagram of a tooth, and um, we've got the uh, adjacent tooth, and we were talking before about this area, and this now is an area of overlap because we can floss in here, which is good, or through here, which is good for these areas, prevent those areas from getting a cavity, but also we can go a little bit further down and we can clean this area out. Now, of course, you will recall that this coal goes down. So it's a little bit more difficult, but if you imagine in three dimensions, as this tooth wraps around, you can still floss. And the best thing to do, if you can, but this is not always that easy, is to actually almost lasso the, the uh, floss round because then you can go up and down and clean the surface. You can only do that the best you can. It's not that easy, you know, for the majority of people. If you're a hygienist, that's different, or a dentist, but... Okay, so, um, let's just... Yeah, let's, let's do this. So, here we go back to this tooth here, uh, this diagram here. So we'll say that, sorry that's not quite right, but anyway, you get the drift. Um, so what you want to do is to remove the plaque. The way you do that is to put the brush, okay, let, let's, let's start again. Right. Okay, so here we have, and this is the tooth from here, from, from the neighbor's viewpoint. And we said that the gum comes up and it goes down and it comes up and that's that's sort of the way it is. Now, round the tooth, there is a little gap. In other words, there is a space which you can get down here and it's about two millimeters, well, say, not two millimeters deep. And it's in there that the plaque hides. So when, that's why they say, when you're brushing, this is the toothbrush, right? The best thing, the best area to get in is around this area or all along here so that the toothbrush bristles are going down and in. My suggestion is to draw little circles because the circles work the bristles. If we got the brush again, when you're pushing against here and here, those bristles become uh, angled in. And that point is quite useful because that's what's going to be actually going round. Well, not in this case because it's the adjacent tooth, but 
here, it's going to be going around here, working in. Electric toothbrushes work the same. Uh, ro uh, uh, what do they call them? Rotating brushes. Uh, ones that go in circles. That's, that's good because you can still um, go into this area. But an ordinary toothbrush is fine, and an electric toothbrush is, is fine too, because it does the equivalent of the, um, of the uh, circular movements in, in, vib in, in a vibrational manner. In actual fact, you can use an electric toothbrush and still use it in circles, and then, um, or little circles, and in that case, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. So the take home, and as I say, that's a pretty basic view here, but the take home here is if this is the tooth, and this is the gum, you're looking at it from the adjacent tooth, this is the area you want to get in because this is where the plaque hides out in there. And if you leave it there for too long, what happens is you get scale, calculus, tartar, whatever you want to call it, because that calcifies. In other words, it, it, it basically, um, it's a bit like a reef, I suppose. Um, and that's why the hygienist or the dentist removes this because it's not actually the scale that's causing any problem, because actually it doesn't. But what it does is it acts as a prevention for cleaning. Oh, yeah, it prevents you from cleaning properly because the plaque hides out underneath. So it's a good idea to get rid of that just so that you can get in and clean it properly. If you don't, what happens is that point at which the gum attaches to the tooth gets destroyed and you get what's called a pocket. And you've probably all heard of that. It's called a gum pocket. And as we said, normally it would be, say, 0 to 2 millimeters max. Um, but it can go down and down and down. So anything beyond, let's say, 2 to 3 is a watch. And then as soon as you get into 4, you're beginning to get a little bit concerned. And then 4 to 5, you're getting really quite concerned. And then beyond there, um, you're getting very concerned. Because the deeper it gets, of course, the harder it is to get down there. Uh, in the olden days, I um, used to do a gingivectomy, um, which was basically to remove the gum to get in there better, because in effect it removed the, or reduced the depth. But that's not really the, um, uh, the most pleasant of procedures. And it's far better to, uh, to do it non-surgically if you can. And uh, so the name of the game is getting the toothbrush bristles in there. Flossing is a bit of a must if you're going to, um, well, you know what they say. They say uh, you don't have to floss all your teeth, just the ones you're going to keep, what you want to keep. So that's uh, a very, very quick overview. I didn't go through this um, with the my website, uh, which is the www.lookgoodforyounger.com. But if anybody wants to uh, make any comments, uh, that's, that's great. Um, as I say, I'll probably come back when I've remembered that I've forgotten something really significant. But anyway, until then, we'll see you tomorrow.